got something a little bit different this week. I didn't actually get much done on the mini lathe except cleaning up the drive motor and yeah, that was about it. Anyway, I'll get back to it. In the meantime, someone very special in my life is a Beatles fan. Downloaded this model of Paul McCartney from the Thingiverse and did a investment, lost PLA casting uh, for uh, probably half a year ago or so. In the meantime, I found a place online which sold a set of uh, 3D models of all four of the Beatles. So it's coming up on Mother's Day and birthdays and stuff, so I thought it's time I try casting John Lennon. My 3D modeling experience is all CAD based, so I had to use a ZBrush, Mesh Mixer, and Blender to get the models uh, prepared for uh, printing. Here you can see my first attempt at printing John. He was only stuck down by the soles of his feet, which just don't give an, a strong enough uh, connection with the, the glass base. So after a few layers, it, the foot got knocked off and then it just started spraying the plastic everywhere. So I got this print of John started, but as you can see, it got to the top of the foot and then must have lost steps and, and then was offset by this being the leg by about one leg width to the to the side. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. It's an unusual failure. Um, Z homing height was set too low. So the nozzle was actually touching the bed when it thought it was still slightly above it. I've now used feeler gauges to measure that and adjust it. Unfortunately, this 3D printer's got a sensor and it can always detect the moment when I go, nah, it's working fine. I'll go to bed and leave it to run overnight unattended. And this is what happens. Well, it looks kind of weird, but this first half of the model did actually print quite nicely. So I'll keep it. I do need to straighten the base a little. It uh, lifted off the, off the printer. I bisected the model and now printing off the top half of the model, which I'll then just glue together with hot glue, which this being a, a lost wax kind of um, investment casting kind of process, the hot wax will also burn out just as the PLA does. From the other perspective, of course, I've seen photos I didn't really want to see from, uh, from John and Yoko's uh, sleeping, and uh, this may still actually be an accurate model of uh, at least some parts of his anatomy. <laughs> Well, there's our rather discombobulated John that needs to be reassembled. I've now sanded and fitted the parts, taking off the flashing or elephant's foot along the, the edge. And now we get to the nerve wracking bit, which is going to be gluing them together, hopefully in alignment, using uh, just normal hot glue, which probably won't heat up until I turn it on. There's the model now prepared, glued together and sanded. So next up I need to put it in the flask. So here you can see the um, form. I've mounted it on a piece of wood with sprues uh, and gates. This is going to be the flask. I'm using this to try and reduce the amount of investment I need. This will then be glued to the bottom and then the whole thing will be filled through the top. The top. Now before I do that, I want to use some, this is the, the stuff you put in a dishwasher to stop the, the, the glass corrosion. And I think it's just glycol. But basically it, it cuts the, the, the surface tension of water. So I'm just going to 
put this all over the model to try and prevent uh, air bubbles from forming when I pour it. The a better idea would be to use a vacuum, but I don't have a, a good system to pull a vacuum on um, investment. And I did get a few air bubbles last time I did one of these models. I'm sure I'll still end up with a few little air bubbles at the end, but um, they generally form like warts on the on the outside of the casting, and therefore can be ground away after after the casting's poured. Of course, the form of a 3D print with the striations also assists the air sticking to it, which is not ideal. So the next thing, the flask goes over the top. One of my friends gave me a box of old investment powder that they'd bought for some project years ago and, and hadn't used. Uh, Invest CP. I found that in the internet uh, I need a 4 to 1 mixture by weight between the powder, which comes in 160 gram sachets, and this liquid. You've only got about an 8 minute um, work time though, so you really got to get cracking on it. Now most people here who are married will probably recognize the substantial risk I'm taking um, that I get busted using kitchen appliances for an unknown chemical process, especially considering the probability that this, um, that this movie actually gets seen. Um, I'm basing this whole thing on a, the assumption that by the time she sees that I used the uh, the kitchen appliances. She'll be so happy with the result that I get it, that I get forgiveness. I'll let you know. Of course, one of my uh, covering arguments is well, nothing was said last time I did it. I believe this is the kind of investment product that's used by the dental industry to make bridges and all those other expensive stuff that you put in your face. This stuff's quite strongly exothermal, so it warms up quite a bit as it hardens, which of course softens the 3D printed um, um, flask. And you can see here that there's, yeah, I've got my doubts whether there's any plaster in this area. There's definitely at the bottom, you can feel the heat there. Oh, you can feel it, no, you can feel heat in multiple places. I guess we'll just see. Let it leave it to harden overnight. Tomorrow I'll take off the flask and we'll see whether it did flow through everything or whether it's a failure. I got busted taking the um, the mixer back upstairs. She was on the phone. Uh oh, he's just brought my mixer back from the basement. I don't like that. When confronted, of course, I did as any good husband would do. Having learnt from Basil Fawlty, the best defence is always pathetic lies. I lied. Well, it's now hardened for long enough that it's cooled down. So let's cut it off the base and see whether there's any point going ahead with this one. Hmm, okay, yeah. Definitely voids. Well, this may be a complete waste of time because there's a big void here in the base and also comes up the side. But 
I'm at a point now where I really don't have anything much to lose to just uh, try filling this and see whether the mold holds together when I cast it. Time's kind of run out. I don't have time to print another new model um, and I don't have enough investment to do another full casting anyway so I'll try and repair this mold and see what happens. Now that this is set overnight, let's break open the mold and see whether it's actually going to be worth pouring or not. Well, you can see a definite line where the two pores joined. I guess we won't see it see until after it's uh, been molded what it looks like inside. There's quite a bit of porosity from from air bubbles. I'm not too worried about putting PLA in the in the burnout oven. It tends to burn off quite 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 cleanly without any bad smells or anything. But the I don't know what this this tape would burn off like, so we'll get rid of it. Well, it's obviously promising enough to give it a pour and we'll see where it goes from there shall we so next off I'll be off to my furnace with a small my smallest burner at low heat and let it burn out for a few hours let's get this show on the road shall we sit on a couple of bits of brick so that there's space for the PLA to fall out. Right, I think we're now ready to go. I've got this bucket, which has four and a half kilos of copper and half a kilo of tin. The furnace has been burning for now about three and a half hours. And it looks like it's, it's nicely burnt off. We've got a nice red glow inside the furnace. So the furnace should also be hot enough to start on oil after this. I can pick this up with this pair of tongs somehow. Oh, yeah, that works well enough at least. This is the scary bit that I really do not want it to break. There you can see that the inside of the mold is actually glowing orange. While I'm waiting for the crucible to heat up, I'm just making up some, some green sand. My sand down there is a bit too dry, just adding a bit of moisture and remulling it. I think it's now it's time to start the melt. Good lesson, don't buy cheap gloves off, 
off Amazon buy these ones the expensive ones from the actual industrial suppliers so these those other ones were useless Right, let's move over to, to oil, shall we? Guess off. Well, this is the resulting casting. It's um, it's not as bad as I was as fearing, but it's not good enough. It didn't completely fill the base. There's a void through here. There's a corner that's missing. These risers didn't fill on the ends. Um, it did fill all the way up this this leg nicely. That's looking good. What I also find is I'm getting kind of weird sort of mix of red brass color which is what I would have expected but also patches with a very bright bright pat color now that obviously there was a bit of zinc in that um, in that mix there was a bit of brass as we saw when it flared off so I'm wondering whether it, I just didn't stir the metal enough to actually get a homogenous mix another thing I'm seeing is this kind of a black residue now I'm wondering whether that comes from using um, black filament the last time I did a casting like this, I used a see-through filament, and I would assume that the see-through filament um, has no additives to it and, and should therefore burn out easier. There's also a bit of a shrinkage defect here in the in gate. It shouldn't be a problem, that's just up under up into his foot from below. I will fettle it. I'll give this as a placeholder for a future version where I do a decent one. There it is after the initial fettling. There's quite a bit of flashing up around here. There's also some sort of a weird, probably an air bubble or lump here that I need to take off. To take off the worst of the flash, I'll use this um, carbide burr and a die grinder. <coughs> I've now realized what my biggest mistake there was. Remember when I printed the bottom half and the print failed, 
I cut it off to a clean line and then printed the top. Now when I printed the top of course I had a, a flat surface at the bottom of his torso from the, from the printer. Whereas the bottom of his torso had the internal structure of the print with the uh, like honeycomb sort of shape. Now obviously it only needed one tiny little hole for the investment to get in there and fill up that honeycomb structure which is why I've got all these these defects on the bottom half of the torso. Oh, live and learn. I'm going to redo this and when I do I'll try and print it in one go. We'll try and add a bit of a patina to it with vinegar and then bleach. If the vinegar doesn't change the colour enough what I can also do is use a little hydrochloric acid. That should go a bit faster I guess. Well there we have it. I've done a little bit of um, a patina with hydrochloric acid and then a little bit of bleach. Probably won't do any more than this. I'm going to need to recast the whole statue, get it right next time. I still think it's probably going to go across quite well. So anyway, that's the end of this video. And once again, thanks for watching. Till next time.